Oh, hello. Today we are wrapping up my reading for the month of June 2021, and I definitely feel like we can say I am well on my way to a rebound out of my slump. Still kind of getting some of my mojo back, but I definitely feel like my attention for reading is back which is great. And I read a lot of things this month that I really enjoyed. Got some work or progress done on challenges I've been working on, which is great, et cetera, et cetera. So with that being said, let's start with my stats and then we will get into my hits, my surprises and my disappointments for the month of June. So in June, I did read 18 books for a combined total pages of 5,171 pages with an average book length of 287 pages. That is a thousand more pages than I read in May. And that makes sense because while technically in May, I read more books, I think I read 21 books in May. They were very, most of them were very short. I read quantity page wise 25% more, even if I read technically a fewer number of actual books. So anyway, some validation there that I am getting back in the groove a little bit. Of those books, I own 14 of them and four of them came from the library or Kindle Unlimited. The average amount of time one of those books had been on my TBR was 16 months and the average age of book I read was 16 years. I paid for 61% of the books that I read and my average book cost was $4.30. In terms of genre breakout, mystery was my big thing this month. So I read eight mysteries of those 18 books, eight of them were mysteries. And then uh, the rest was really just sort of a smorgasbord of nonfiction, fantasy, historical fiction, romance, just you know, all my usual suspects, but mysteries were definitely what I was most in the mood to read this month and that reflects in the stats. And then you can see from my ratings that uh, pretty highly skewed. So definitely my most common rating was a three star or a four star, but I did have two 4.5s and one five star. So that was really exciting. It's been a while since I've had a four and a half or a five star. I don't think I had any in May. So uh, I feel like we are trending in the right direction in that respect. And then in terms of challenges I addressed, we'll start with books that I'm not going to talk about in the rest of the video. So I read For Your Own Good by Samantha Downing as an ARC. I also did a Cats Pick My TBR challenge. And the two of those that I'm not going to talk about in the rest of the video are In a Dark Dark Wood and She Come By It Natural. Really love She Come By It Natural. In a Dark Dark Wood was fine, but not great. I reread Branded by Fire by Nalini Singh as a part of my podcast I've got going on the Side Changeling series. So I got that done. And then I did finish up my Dorothy L. Sayers, Lord Peter Whimsey reading for the year because I read Lord Peter Views the Body and The Hangman's Holiday. Pretty much same thoughts I've had about the short stories so far, which is like, there's some of them that I like better than others. Like they're pretty uneven in their quality, I think. And they're fine. They're good. They're th I gave both of those collections three stars. She does have a very sort of tell rather than show approach to her short stories, which I think if I liked her authorial voice better, probably would work better for me because I don't know that that's totally different than how like Christie or even Sir Arthur Conan Doyle did their mystery short stories. But I think I just like their authorial voice better. So it works a little bit better for me. I don't know. Yeah, we've talked about this before. Overall, my Lord Peter reread slash first read was a little bit of a bust this year, but I am officially now done with that. And that was on my 21 books I want to read in 2021. And I only have six of those left to read. So I can just read like one a month for the rest of the year and I will complete that challenge. So that's exciting. And then uh, I did finally read Circe by Madeline Miller. This was a five star prediction for me. And I would not give this five stars. I gave this four stars, not because like, I don't, this is one of those books where I don't really have any criticisms of it. And I totally get why people love this book. For me, it didn't have like whatever that kind of X factor is that made me just like love, love it. But the writing in particular, I think is really propulsively readable in a way that I don't think we often get in literary fiction. Like this is a real page turner, which for this kind of literary fiction, I just don't think you often see. So that makes more sense to me why this was such a breakout hit. Like I basically, my takeaway from this book is like, oh, I get why this was a big hit because it's really well written. It's really page turnery. And I think it has a lot of interesting things to say about like feminism and consent, what it means to be not even just a goddess in these myths, but just a god in general that like, there's a certain amount of free will that they lack, even though they are divine. 
that I think is interesting. Like, I thought that was all very interesting. Um, content warning, definitely, definitely for sexual assault in this, but I thought that, that was um, an interesting component of the story and was integrated in a way that felt, it felt earned. It felt like it was organic to the story that Madeline Miller was telling. You know, I don't know that I can ever totally forgive Cersei because she did turn Peter Jackson into a guinea pig at some point. So in my heart, I just, I, that's something I know about her, even if it doesn't happen on page. But all in all, this was really, really good. Not, like I said, not a five star, an actual five star pick. Didn't turn out to be, but very glad that I finally read this and would definitely recommend it. So actually got that through that pretty quickly this time. So we can start getting into my hits, my surprises, and my disappointments. We will start with my disappointments. And the first one I'm going to mention is very much a it's not you, it's me kind of a thing. That's Heroin Complex by Sarah Kuhn. This is doing exactly what it's trying to do. I, this is one of my cats pick my TBR picks. I feel weird not liking it as much. Like I gave it three stars. It's not bad. In terms of my actual enjoyment, it's probably closer to a two star. But I just don't, I don't know what to do with books like this where I'm like, I think, I think you're accomplishing what you set out to accomplish. So like in that sense, like good job, but it was just much more cartoony than I was expecting. And for that reason, it didn't fully work for me. I don't know. I don't really know how to think or talk about this. I can see if you like this, why you would like it. And I can see you definitely going on in the series because from what I've heard, the series keeps going in this vein and just gets better. So I wouldn't like steer people away from this. If you're looking for, I would say if you are looking for probably something that reads more like chiclet than a romance, even though it is a technically a romance, um, but you want it to be with superheroes and quite sort of like over the top and a little bit cartoony in its tone, I think you will like this. That's just not what I wanted. I wanted it to be a little more I wanted it to read more like a genre romance than I feel like it ended up reading like. I don't know if any of that made sense. All that, all that to say, it is three stars, but I do still feel like it was kind of disappointing. And then my other disappointment, actually, I just realized kind of in a similar vein is that I was disappointed by Bullet Train and I can't remember the author off the top of my head, but this is a thriller that is coming out that is an adaptation of a bestseller in Japan. And Again, I feel like this book did what it was trying to do well. It is basically an action adventure story set on a train with a lot of absurdism. And it's about like this assassin who's trying, it's like a whole thing. It's very madcap in its tone. And I think it achieves that very well. It's just not what I thought the book was going to be. I thought it was going to be a little bit more of a traditional mystery thriller kind of book. And that's just not what it is. So for that reason, I did feel somewhat disappointed by it. I gave it three stars, though, because I do think it's perfectly fine. It's just not what I was wanting from the book, if that makes sense. I just think if you know that going in, that it's a little bit kind of a, an unusual type of thriller. I think it does that pretty well. I did feel like well, I mean, I, I had critiques, but they would get spoilery. So I guess we'll just leave it that I do feel like it was a, a three star kind of book that feels right. So it was a little bit disappointing. I did also feel like it was very cinematic. That maybe that's the non spoilery thing I can say this read to me more like a script than a book. And so I would definitely see I believe that there's going to be a big um, adaptation of it with maybe Brad Pitt coming out in a year or two. And that I would definitely see and recommend because I do think that the story lent itself more to that form than maybe to a novel. I don't know. Anyway, I did feel like it was disappointing. But but for both of these, it's like, they disappointed me, but I could see they're ones that I definitely see who the audience. Okay, I don't I my memory card filled up. I don't know where I left off. I think I was done talking about disappointments. And I think it's time to start talking about surprises. So we're just gonna roll with that. Okay, both of these are very slight. We've got like themed things happening for each of these categories. Both of these are very small books. So the first I gave uh, this four stars and this four and a half stars. So I gave four stars to The Scent of Almonds and Other Stories by Camila Lackberg, because I was not expecting this to hit the spot for me in terms of what I like in a mystery thriller as much as this did. Because so the titular story is an isolated closed circle mystery, which you guys know is my thing. So as long as a story like that hits certain plot beats that I know that I enjoy in that kind of book, 
I tend to be pretty down for the ride. Even if I know objectively it's not the best, I tend to just be like, yeah, I had a good time in that. But I really liked the way that the sort of authorial voice of this one was, which is unusual for me with um, Scandinavian literature. I, or sorry, specifically mystery thriller type books. For whatever reason, I don't always get on with the writing style or sort of like authorial postures from writers with mystery thriller from that part of the world. But this one really, really worked for me and I would definitely read more from this author. The title story definitely was my favorite, but the others I thought were fun too. And yeah, this just hit the spot for me in a way that I guess I hoped it would, but I do always just kind of wonder <laughs> when it comes to uh, authors, mystery authors from that part of the world. Again, just like for whatever reason, taste wise, it doesn't always work for me, but this one really, really did. And then four and a half stars, so like a favorite of the year to 84 Charing Cross Road, which is so freaking charming, guys. Like I was smiling ear to ear reading this. The book this reminds me of is m probably my second all time favorite memoir, which is My Life in France by Julia Child. Just with like how charming of a narrator Helen Humph is. So I was expecting the reason that I put this as a surprise instead of a hit is I thought that this was a very short um, sort of like a novella. I thought that it was an epistolary story. But really, this is a memoir, like this is a collection of letters between the author and a bookshop in London at 84 Charing Cross Road, that uh, she was a writer in New York, looking for special like very particular books that were hard to get in the US in the post war, like this is right after World War Two, kind of in the post war, pe war period, it was hard for her to get nice editions. So she started writing to this little bookshop in London. And so you learn a lot about sort of the bookshops, kind of like what post World War II life was like for Londoners. And um, it talks a lot about like rationing and like what they could and couldn't get and get access to. And she is just such a charming correspondent. And you find out about the lives of the people in the bookshop. And this is just so cute and so charming. The reason I thought this was fiction was that I believe that there is a movie adaptation starring Anthony Hopkins, which I definitely feel like I want to seek out now. But I thought for that reason, it was fiction. But it's not it's not fiction. It's very small, and very, very charming. So if you are looking for just sort of like a light, like make you feel good about humanity kind of a book, I would definitely recommend this. It it really hit the spot for me. And now we are already into the hits. So my third place hit, I put The Lost Hero by Rick Reardon, because I just love him so much. Uncle Rick never fails to deliver for me. And I finally was in the mood to start the next spinoff series from the original Percy Jackson five books. So I read The Lost Hero, we get introduced to a few new characters of mysterious origin, who we'll find more about, I'm sure as the books unfold. But I love the direction that this new series is headed in. I really like Jason, apparently not everybody loves loves him as a main character, but I thought he was really fun. I really, really liked Piper as a new point of view character, a new main character. And then Leo was also fun, but Piper was my favorite of those three. But I like Jason. Uh, I'm definitely shipping Piper and Jason together. And I'm very intrigued by this little switcheroo that's happening. And I'm excited to find out from Percy's perspective what's been going on in the next book. So very excited to be back. The camp Half-Blood verse. Yay, I'm very much enjoying that. So that was third place hit. Second place hit was 4.5 stars. And that is the final girl support group by Grady Hendrix. Okay, so I think what this book cements for me is that I just really am into Grady Hendrix and whatever it is he's gonna write, because I just really love his authorial voice and sort of his way into stories like his point of view and getting into a story, I think just really works for me. And is I think a little different than most authors I've seen. He has a sort of wry, dark humor to his work. He also has sort of like a, a throwback nostalgia element to the 80s, which I believe is when he was growing up. So I think he kind of looks to that era for a lot of his inspiration which I think is an interesting, like it, it adds an interesting sort of lens to what he produces. And then the way he writes female characters, I really appreciate because they are complicated characters. They are very flawed, but not in the way that I feel like male authors often write female flawed characters in terms of making them sexual in a specific kind of way. I don't know if I have great language for this, but he makes them flawed 
as just a human being and not because they have some sort of hang up on a man or some sort of sexual past. Like that it can be a part of the story of why, like of who they are. It doesn't feel like that is the core of who they are. I don't know if any of that makes sense, but I really, really like the way he writes female characters is sort of the long and the short of it. I really like our point of view character in this particular book. I should say the setup for this is this idea of final girls from slasher films, like final girls from serial killers. And they have the secret support group where they meet every month to sort of like process their trauma. All of them were part of like an original serial killing thing, but then like slasher movies, all, pretty much all of them have had a second round of somebody coming for them. They are very traumatized and have dealt with it in a lot of different ways, all of which felt believable to me and I liked. And I really liked their dynamic, which was very fucked up in a lot of ways. But uh, but I just thought I really liked the way he writes groups of women. I don't know. I don't think this is going to be a book everybody likes because I don't know that this was like super unpredictable or I don't know, I can see that this wouldn't be a book for everyone, but it really worked for me and it makes me excited to read more from him. I know I have at least one of his titles on my Kindle. I should try to go back and read some of his backlist because I'm sure I would enjoy it, but this really hit the spot for me. And if you're looking for a serial killer thriller that has a lot of dark humor to it and a little bit of a different sort of perspective, I think this could work for you. It definitely worked for me. Let's just put it that way. And then my number one hit of the month and the five star book of the month was The Fixer by Jennifer Lynn Barnes, which was a, also a part of my cats picking my TBR. Marple picked this one and therefore she won. So congratulations to Marple. This was so charming and fun and exactly what I like from YA thriller. Jennifer Lynn Barnes, I have said before, and I think that this like even more cements the fact that she is my favorite YA thriller writer. She has this really nice balance of clearly writing for actual teens. Like these are not, I don't think, written for an adult audience because it doesn't read the way that I think YA that is actually aimed at adults reads. It doesn't quite have that tone to it, but I think she takes teens seriously and writes for them assuming that they have a certain level of intelligence. And I think that these are really great books for teens who are trying to or who are like starting to get interested in adult thrillers. I think that these transition nicely because they have a lot of the tropes that adult thrillers have, but with teen protagonists and like with a correct with, a, with an appropriate like reading level and sort of like thematically what YA does. I think that she does that really well. This particular one is sort of a political thriller. So um, basically we have our main character Tess. She basically unexpectedly ends up having to go live with her older sister in DC and comes to find out that her older sister is basically kind of a a fixer. She's sort of like Carrie Washington on Scandal, that kind of a vibe. And she quickly gets embroiled in some things that are happening, both at her new fancy prep school, but also they feed back into things her sister is working on. So I really just love this. I, it kept me engaged the entire time. I liked where it ended up going. It did have a twist that I could see a mile away. And also it's something she, Jennifer Lynn Barnes has done a few times. So like it was predictable. But I think she took, she twisted the twist in a way that I wasn't necessarily expecting and I appreciated that. So all in all, I just love this. I can't wait to read the sequel. Apparently the sequel a little bit more mixed from people, but this particular book I really, really enjoyed. So I think that will do it for wrapping up my reading for June. Let me know what you thought of any of the books I talked about uh, in the comments below or any books that you were excited about from June. I'll put that in the comments below. And yeah, I think that that will do it for me. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below, including a link to merch that I now have, including this put it in your eyeballs little hoodie, which I'm obsessed with. It's very soft and... I just, I think it's really fun. So yeah, that's in the description box. And yeah, I think that that will do it for me. I hope you are having an absolutely lovely day today. And I will just talk to you soon. Bye.